Hello friends! Today we build a simple yet elegant cribbage board. Stay tuned! Alright, this is the top of a cribbage board that I made for Bridget oh, two or three years back. And I like a lot of it. I like how the color looks. This is some Paducah maple and walnut. And I have some of those boards left over actually from this project that I'm going to be using for today's video. But what I don't like is that these barely have a space in between every five holes. So I'm going to make that a little bit better. And I also don't like how these holes are so wide here. I wanted to do one track, two track, and three track, but then it's confusing, like is this a track, is this a track, I don't know. So I'm going to simplify the design, we're just going to have an out, two outside tracks. These holes are going to be spaced closer together, and the um, sections of five are going to be more distinct, so you can actually count to five better as well. I'm going to be making a jig for that, and uh, it's going to look nice, so let's get started. I knew the template was going to be the best way for consistent hole spacing, so I had a nice squared up rectangular piece of half inch plywood from a previous project, and I just spaced them out there three quarters apart here, five sixteenths between each hole, and five eighths every five holes. So I did a set of ten in both rows, and then I'll drill those holes and I'll move the template over, sticking two doubles in the last two holes that I drilled so that I know it's going to be um, in the perfect position. I ripped the Paduk and Purple Heart to one inch, the Maple to one quarter of an inch, and the Walnut to two inches wide. I've decided to make two boards, one with the center strip of Purple Heart and one with the center strip of Paduk, but I'm going to glue them up together as one. The glue up is pretty straightforward. I'm using Tight Bond 2 and a brush to make sure that the glue is distributed evenly across the boards, and then I clamp it up. I've got six clamps, a few on each side to make sure that there's pressure going in both directions, and I don't worry too much about the squeeze out because of the planer. The planer will get rid of all that glue as I take off a layer on 16th at a time, and it makes sure the whole board is the same thickness. Part of me just wants to keep the board like this after planing and sanding. It looks so pretty. And here's the jig in action. At first it was a little bit clumsy, but once I knocked on those pegs a little bit and had a first row of practice, it became a lot easier to do. In total that's 30 holes on one side, times 2 is 60, times 2 board was 120, and it really didn't take me more than 15 minutes to do all of that. Once I was finished drilling all the holes, I put a 10 degree bevel on all four edges of the board and sanded them smooth. For finishing touches, I applied my personal wood burn and then it was ready to finish. This time I tried something new. This is my first time working with wipe-on polyurethane by Minwax and I really enjoyed it. I'd like to upgrade to working with tong or linseed oil and I think this is a good transition. They turned out wonderfully and it was super easy to use. I feel like cribbage boards are the bread and butter for woodworkers. I know I've made a ton of them. Have you? If you have, you should let me know in the comments section below and send me a picture I'd love to see. I feel like every time I make a cribbage board, it shows the next level of skill that I've learned since making the last one. So, thanks for taking the time to watch this video. I'm the Midwest Man Mountain. Be sure to subscribe. And until next time, bye!